danger of snow, and it turned out there was snow. That means we can't get into the school. But our local STEM Action Center was phenomenally kind. And we were able to get valuable testing, a preliminary fit check, and a lot of code work done. That was when we finally started getting our robot together. We got a breacher put on. We got most of the electronics. We did a preliminary fit check. Uh, we also tested the breacher during that time in the drivetrain, so that was really good. And got the breacher to work on the port colors and the uh, shot. Okay, go for it. Once we were able to get back in the school, we just continued our our crunch time, build up our last mechanism and get going. During the big days, we did so much testing because basically we got all of our pieces put together and we got like all the math figured out and the software had its code, so we just basically was just non-stop testing, figuring out all the small things and stuff like that. So basically that was just building up until that final weekend where we can mount everything. So going into Saturday, we know we have a huge block of time to finish everything we want to have a working robot. We had a drive base with all our integrated ro robot mechanisms ready to be put on. So we first started with the electrical board. So on Saturday, the electrical guys put together all of their stuff on both the top and the bottom of the robot. And the drive train team was able to put the bumpers on. Oh yeah. oh yeah, minimum requirement robot is going to be built and assembled tomorrow and tested. That is an amazing thing. <laughs> electrical finished up the electrical board and wired everything. To be very, very efficient and effective tomorrow using that time, very, very smart. We've got any mechanical issues that was having and we will be ready tomorrow for mount. We had to push shooter mount to uh, Sunday and we got the shooter mounted. But then the pivot would not work. The goal was that by the time the weekend was over, we had a finished product that we could bolt to the robot and say, this is done. But things never quite go the way that we want them to. So we had to change out the motor. That took some more time. And then we got the bleacher on. <laughs> Clipping bolts, filing stuff down, make clearances better, whatever we could do really. It was just all hands on deck, rush, go, get it done, and then fix the errors. And by the end of the weekend, we had a robot ready for a code to be put on. Mech 1 mounted the final shooter, yeah. or one of the two. Yeah, I'll make some noise. Yeah. Yeah. And we also made a ridiculous amount of progress on the outboard shooter. Yeah. There was an interference issue with our climbing mechanism behind us allowing the shooting mechanism only to tilt back about four degrees when we wanted to go back approximately 60 to 80, depending on the shot, and we call that the inboard shooter. Every aspect of that shooting mechanism was within the bounds of the robot. Once we figured out that issue about a week ago, we began designing and implementing a version two codenamed outboard shooter. Outboard shooter moves the majority of the mechanism forward, redoing some of the geometry so that the flywheels that act as the shooting and intake mechanism are outside the robot in its neutral position and that gives us all the degrees of freedom we need. So everyone else put their, like the shooter bolted everything in and the breacher arm bolted everything in. We kind of snuck our way in there and placed our thing down and everything fits together when it's all flat. But uh, we did have some problems still with the shooter and the climber. For the robot we bag, we plan to not put climber on because we just don't know how the climber will behave with all the mechanisms on the final drive base. So it's no longer on the robot because our code still needs some work, some fine tuning. We also want to just work with like our mechanism tilts, so we want to figure out exactly how everything's working with that. And also we have not done a lot of testing with the full weight of the robot, so we're doing just a ton of tests with like the full weight and the full balance and everything like that. And then once we can do that reliably, then we will be put on the real robot. We hope to get the um, climber mounted during the six hours that we have to uh, open the bag, take the robot out, and put the mechanisms on. In order to get the climber onto the robot for the first competition, we need to have a working, reliable, can do it multiple times mechanism by March 4th. Things did not go according to schedule and the drive time we had anticipated was greatly reduced. After the weekend, we had a robot that had all the mechanisms on it but we didn't have code that was working on it. So just two days of putting code on is a really short amount of time. 
Since we were so cramped for time, one of the teachers was nice enough to let us meet directly after school. So what we were trying to work on was getting all the different parts of our robot integrated together in software and mechanically. So there were a bunch of different problems that we encountered with both our mechanical design and our software design. It wasn't a lot of time, so what ended up happening is we said, oh, we need, we need a lot more time to do this, so let's meet basically for seven hours on Monday and Tuesday from uh, two to nine. To basically put our code on it and test it, and then revise it, test it, revise it, test it, and that just takes a lot of time. Control Systems came in early to do catch up on some of the work that they had they had left, and then everyone else came in at six to nine to get the robot integrated and hopefully get driving. And we actually did manage to get the robot on the carpet and moving. We actually got people driving the robot. It was nice. We are focusing on downward position shooter harvesting, which was quite unfortunate because downward position also precluded us from doing any of the other obstacles at all without damaging the shooter. Bag and tag or stop build day is when the robot time is officially done. You're not allowed to build anymore. Your time during build season is done. What you have to do is they give you these nice mylar bags and a bunch of zip ties and a data sheet to be able to put down when you bagged. And basically you put the robot and a lot of materials inside the bag, seal it up and zip tie it together. From that point on until your competitions or since we have a new district format, we have six hours before competition. Until those six hours, the bag may not be open. And that's a way of ensuring through the honesty policy that you're not extending the time limit. It's something uh, worldwide that FIRST does. So that when we go to competition, the judges all know that every person had the same amount of time working on the robot. Nobody was able to take advantage and use a few more hours. Everyone was allotted the same amount of time. The day of bag is a roller coaster complete roller coaster of emotions. The meeting before a bag, you feel stressed out, you're tired, you want to get everything done that you need to get done. But Murphy's Law, it won't happen. You're never going to get everything done by that time. So then come the day of bag where you're still working on stuff. You've gotten past the point of being stressed out and just don't care anymore, to some degree, where you say if something breaks, just keep on going. Just keep on going. Just keep on going. It's just a whole roller coaster of emotions because once you bag it, you get so happy that you see that all that work you've done is finally in that end phase. It's a lot of fun. It's stressful but fun. So we were, I was able to procure a copy of the lockup form and we were able to put the robot in the bag. The two consecutive runs of seven straight hours at the school during weekdays, it was a big relief to just finally get the robot bag knowing we have some more time before we need to open the bag up again. The ideal situation would have been our original plan that was unfortunately delayed by snow to get the robot on Wednesday and test all throughout that weekend. That, that became slowly unfeasible as we had a blizzard and then another snowstorm. <laughs> and so we, we kind of lost a huge amount of time and I think we, were, we sort of like recovered well. Overall I feel like we have something that can perform and we're gonna make it work. No matter what happens, we're gonna enjoy ourselves at competition. And what we bagged, I have confidence in. The bot we have right now meets my minimum requirements and I'm okay with that. We will be going into competition hoping to accumulate as many ranking points as possible because that was our strategy we set at the beginning of the year. Oh, I'm so excited for a competition. I think it's gonna be a great year. I think it's gonna be a really exciting competition. There's nothing more amazing than sitting in a, a Superdome-esque stadium with a few hundred other robotics nerds and just cheering on, screaming, screaming your head off, just ha happy. Even if you don't win, you're still excited. It's the world's greatest sport. I think once we get our bearings and try to get some good driver practice in, that will be really strong. This year bag went pretty well, I believe. By the time it was done, it was very relieving. It's kind of a weight off your shoulders. Just a lot, it's almost like relief that it happened. Obviously we still have a ton of work, but it's still, it's really nice to know that like, we're in a bag and we have something that moves. I love it.
So it, it was bittersweet for me as a senior, my fourth year. Going in, I was really anxious the weekend. I wanted to see something done. I wanted to see it driving. I wanted to see something. I was really happy when things got driving, when we did some debug testing, went over some of the obstacles. But then when we bagged, there's a bit of a bittersweet moment. It's my last build season. It's gone forever. But I bagged something. Because I don't. We bagged it!